Hello friends, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Jay. If you have little ones who love cookies, if you have a husband who loves cookies, if you love cookies, this is the video for you. I love to keep cookies, um, cookie dough frozen down in my deep freeze. Um, for lunches, I always pack myself and Tom just a little something sweet. Cookies fit the bill really well for us. Um, I usually do chocolate chip cookies. I actually posted about that on my Instagram page. I would whip up a big, big batch of cookie dough. I would cut it into um, breakable pieces like what you would get at the store, and I would freeze them and pull them out as I need them during the weeks and put them in the lunches and whatnot. Um, that to me wasn't really worth a video. Um, it's just chocolate chip cookies frozen. Um, but I really wanted to talk about it and get this idea out in front of you guys in case you'd never thought about doing that. So I had the idea. Let's go ahead and do the chocolate chip cookie ones and I'll still show you how I do it. But I think what I want to do is my oven's preheated. I think what I want to do is make a big batch of just a base dough and then divide it into, I've got different bowls over here, and I want to do different fun types of cookies, and we will go ahead and freeze all of them. So we're going to do chocolate chip cookies. I think we're going to do, you know what, let me think on it. Let's get started with the dough, and we'll revisit that at the end, um, because I'm not exactly sure. I still haven't completely decided what combinations of stuff I want to do yet, but we're definitely going to do chocolate chip, and I want to do, I want to do four all together. So, for this base dough, it's a really easy recipe. I've got my mixer. You can use your hand mixer, but I'm taking this recipe and multiplying it by three. So it's going to be a lot. I'm definitely using my stand mixer for this, but if you want to use your hand mixer, if that's what you have, totally fine. I've got a bowl here for my dry ingredients. We're going to start with the flour, and we have six cups of all-purpose flour. Next, we have three tablespoons of cornstarch. And just so you know, you heard me right, cornstarch. We have three teaspoons of baking soda. And just so you know, I will put the original, um, just normal recipe down in the comments and you can multiply it however many times you want to have however many cookies you want to keep in your freezer. Um, I'm going to, I'm tripling this recipe, but I'm going to divide it into four different types of cookies. It's just Tom and I that I make them for. So I think it's more fun to have four different types of cookies, and so I, but I didn't want to multiply the recipe by four. That's a, a lot of cookies. <laughs> it's going to take us a while to get through these as it is. So up to you. Multiply it by however many times. If you've got five kids, multiply it by five. You know, up to you, whatever you think. I am using salted butter, so I'm not going to add any salt to my dry ingredients. I'm just going to combine this very quickly with my whisk, and then we're going to move on to the butter and the sugar. All right, you know my shoebox kitchen. I'm going to move this aside so I've got room. So a quick word on sugars. I'm trying to improve the ingredients that I have in my kitchen. It's been a slow process with a lot of research, and I don't have a ton of money to splurge on certain things, and I've been using just plain white granulated sugar my whole life, and I'm only just recently starting to feel kind of convicted about that. So I did get um, organic light brown sugar, and I got this organic cane sugar um, from Aldi's. It's the, the Simply Nature brand. Is it is it much better? I'm not exactly sure. I like the word organic. I hope that it actually is, and it's not just a workaround for something. Hopefully, if you have any recommendations or any thoughts on sugar, sugar substitutes, where you source your sugar, things like that, I'd love to hear because trying to find whole, real, healthy, safe ingredients is kind of overwhelming and a little scary. So I'm working on it slowly but surely. Okay, so for the sugar, we need a cup and a half of sugar into our mixer here. And then for the brown sugar, which I've got light brown sugar here. You could also use dark brown sugar if you wanted to. I'm going to do two and a fourth cups of the brown sugar. Remember, I'm tripling this recipe because I know that kind of sounds like a lot to me, but we're going for it. We're doing it. I'm going to lightly pack my brown sugar, but I'm not going to get crazy with it because it's already a lot. Now for the butter, you want the same amount of butter as you have the brown sugar, so you want two and a fourth cups of brown sugar. That translates into four sticks and, what is it again? 
uh, four tablespoons. So four sticks and four tablespoons of butter and you want it to be room temperature butter. You guys know me, I never remember to get my butter out and so I had it sitting on the stove which is pre, the oven's preheating so my stove is hot and it got a little melty. <laughs> and now my stove top is covered in butter. This is gonna make so much cookie dough. Okay, so you just wanna blend these together until they're nice and light and fluffy. I'm probably gonna blend them lowish to medium speed. Dog hair, story of my life. Um, for a couple minutes and see what happens. It would probably help to plug it in. I have a new spatula my friend Ed gifted me. Um, it's a Halloween spatula, perfect for making cookies. So I'm just going to scrape down the sides here because there's quite a bit of butter hanging out on the sides and I really want to get it all nice and incorporated. Okay, so that's nice and light and fluffy and absolutely delicious looking. I love this color. This definitely is making me excited for these cookies. Now we're going to add in our vanilla, roughly three tablespoons of vanilla. This is my homemade um, what is it? What I use? I think I used spice. Yeah, I used spiced rum to make this vanilla, which is really exciting. I have a video on it if you're interested in making your own. It's delicious. Okay. And then I'm going to add in six eggs. Okay, probably gonna have to scrape the sides again, but let's go ahead and give this a go. We're gonna get this combined. I'm just gonna kind of scrape the sides as we go here. So the last step here is to put the mixer on the stir speed, the lowest setting that it has, and then slowly add in the flour. With me making such a large batch here, I tripled this. I'm just gonna go slow, and if I feel like the dough looks good, I may not add all of this mixture because I don't want it to be dry. This is a lot of flour. Um, so we're, I'm just gonna kinda play it by ear, follow my gut, and just see what happens. So I'm actually having the opposite problem. My dough is still super wet. I was afraid it was going to be dry. I wouldn't say super wet, but it is definitely on the wet side. However, I would much rather have it be a little wet than have it be a little dry because when I split this dough up into the different bowls, we're going to be adding more ingredients and kind of coming up with our own interesting combinations. For example, in one of them, I'm going to be adding cocoa powder. So I would much rather add cocoa powder to a dough that's a little wet than to a dough that's already too dry. So we'll play around with it and kind of see how it feels and if I need to add a little bit more flour maybe last minute, I could always do that, but I have a feeling it's gonna work out. So give me just a second, let me get cleaned up here. I wanna get my KitchenAid off the counter so that we have a little bit of room to play. <laughs> my hair is out of control. It is so humid here. This, this baby cannot be tamed. Okay, I also wanna to mention to you that I used my paddle attachment instead of my whisk attachment on my stand mixer because this is gonna be a lot easier to get this sticky dough off of than um, the whisk attachment would be, goodness gracious. So just wanted to mention that to you. Okay, so I'm gonna be leaving a portion of the dough in the mixer and then I've got three bowls here and I'm gonna go ahead and scoop out some of the dough into each of these and I don't care if it's precise, we're beyond that. The cookie base, the, the cookie dough is complete. The rest of this is just zhuzhing them up. So it really doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm just gonna roughly kind of divvy this up between these bowls. Okay, so I split it up into these three bowls and then the dough that was left in the stand mixer, I went ahead and just made that chocolate chip easy peasy. I just used the mini chocolate chips. If you've ever, I talked about it in a video, but I don't remember which one now. I'm not a huge chocolate fan and I don't like Obviously, you're not always gonna have a warm chocolate chip cookie. Sometimes you're eating them room temperature, and I hate biting into a full-size chocolate chip. Ugh. And so I use minis because they're much easier for me to eat when they're not melted. So, a little sidebar there. Okay, so, oh, I've got that in the fridge chilling because this dough is incredibly warm, which is fine since we're gonna be putting it in the freezer, but it's gonna make it so much harder to work with when we use our cookie scoop to place it on the cookie sheet. So I've got that one at least in the fridge. I think I've got room to put one more in the fridge. All right, so we've got three 
beautiful blank canvases here and I think I know what I want to do. One of them I'm genuinely concerned about. I don't know if it's going to work, but the other two I feel really good about. Let's start with those. I want to do a chocolate marshmallow. I've never done that before, but I want to try. So I've got some Hershey's um, cocoa. This is unsweetened and I'm fine with that. And I have no idea how much. I'm just going to, we'll start just kind of start and see where it takes us, I guess. Okay, I had a, a darker dough in mind, so let's add a little bit more. This is almost gone. It expires this year, but it's not expired yet. Okay, that's more, that's a better color, I think. Still not, for some reason, I had like dark, dark cookies in my head. I think I'd have to add a lot more cocoa powder to accomplish that, and I don't think I want to do that. I think this is plenty to bring through the cocoa flavor and that's really more important than what they look like. So we'll leave it there and see. I'm going to bake up one of each of these. You know what? I'll do two of each of these so that Tom can try them too when he gets home. Um, and we'll try them together and see if they're a success or not. I won't leave you hanging like that. We'll see. We'll see how they are. So I'm going to add some mini marshmallows to this. I'm excited about that. I'm really interested. I've never, I know that there are cookies, like cookie recipes that have mini marshmallows. I have personally never made one. So I'm really excited to see how that turns out. Hopefully, I love marshmallows. They're a guilty pleasure of mine because they're so bad for you and they're literally just full of crap. But, ugh, I love marshmallows. All right, so that's fine for now. Let me go ahead and um, get this one in the fridge. Okay, this next one is the one that I'm personally the most excited for. It is September or something. I never know the date when I start filming. Um, and so I want to make kind of like a fall pumpkin-y cookie. Um, and I really probably should be including pumpkin puree in this, but I'm not going to for two reasons. A, I don't want to open a can of pumpkin puree to just use a little bit. And B, this is already super wet. I don't want to make it any more wet. So I'm just going to use a bunch of pumpkin pie spice. Usually I go light on the pumpkin pie spice, but not this time. And then I want to do a little bit of cinnamon or a lot of cinnamon. And I want to do walnuts. Cinnamon, pumpkin pie spice, and walnuts. That sounds so good to me. I'm really excited to see how this one turns out. Okay. Oh, oh, I can smell those spices. It smells so good. Get this mixed up. Okay. This one looks good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one in the fridge. I think if I've got space, I can probably squeeze it in here somewhere. My fridge is like barely closing. Okay, the last one that I wanted to do, and I'm not exactly sure how it's going to go, I wanted to do a peanut butter one. And all I wanted to do was just add in some peanut butter. Just straight up peanut butter in the dough. And I kind of just wanted to experiment and see how that goes. But this is super wet, and like you've heard me say literally 500 times now. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to add it in and just kind of see what the dough looks like. Now the question is how much? And this is chunky peanut butter because chunky peanut butter is my favorite. Tom does not like chunky peanut butter, but I think I can get away with it in a cookie, right? All right, let's try that. Okay, done with that. Let's see what this looks like. Baking is kind of intimidating to experiment with because you're, you could really mess it up and genuinely not come out with a product that looks or tastes good. And so that can be a little bit scary, but at the same time, you've got to take chances to learn and you could potentially stumble upon something really delicious. And you know, at the end of the day, it's just, it's just ingredients. It's not the end of the world. So I am definitely taking a risk here trying these new ingredients, but or these new, I guess, kind of recipes, but I'm really excited about it and I'm excited to see how they turn out. I'm happy with it, actually. I think I'm going to leave it. I don't want to add anything else to it, like no flour or anything. I think that this could potentially still work and we'll find out. I want to bake these up first and see how they bake up before I 
put them in the freezer. And so we'll do the freezer stuff last. I want to bake them and try them first because if this just absolutely does not work, then I know that I need to kind of adjust it a little bit and see if I can fix it. So I want to do that. However, I am going to try and squeeze this in the fridge because I'm feeling really confident that if I were to put these in the um, oven now, they would just completely spread out and be flat and gross. So I want to firm this dough up a little bit, chill it in the fridge. I think I'm gonna leave it in there for 30 minutes, and then I'm probably just gonna go ahead and put them in the oven. So I think I'll come back to you when these cookies are baked and we will try them together. All right, you guys, so I have one of each of the four different kinds of cookies. I'm really pleased with I, I chilled them in the fridge for a half an hour, like exactly 30 minutes. And the spread, I'm really happy. The chocolate with the marshmallow spread the most. The peanut butter spread the least, which I'm really surprised because the peanut butter was the most wet, but it kept its shape the best. Um, the chocolate chip looks totally normal, and the pumpkin-y cinnamon one looks totally normal. So I'm going to start with the peanut butter one. And this is what we've got here. Super soft baked really well, dog hair, always. So, I undercook my cookies, it's my toxic trait. I can't stop. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. You guys saw how much peanut butter I put in there, I just spooned some in. These are very peanut buttery. The outside is really crispy. The inside is super soft. Mmm. Oh, this is so good. Okay. Mmm. We're off to a great start. Mmm. I need milk. You cannot taste test cookies without a glass of milk. All right, next up, I'm really excited about this one. This is the chocolate with the marshmallow, and the um, it's it's pretty dark. I was afraid that it wasn't going to be, but it, I mean, it looks like a chocolate cookie. So, let's try this one. Oh my gosh, you guys! Mmm. This tastes like hot chocolate in a cookie. Mmm. Oh my goodness. You guys, we're hitting it out of the park here today. That one might be my favorite. I'm really looking forward to the pumpkin one, but that the chocolate with the marshmallow might be my favorite. So this one's cute, and it's kind of got like a swirl look to it. That's very cute. This one's really undercooked. Hmm. This one tastes like... Hmm. This tastes like a pumpkin-y snickerdoodle. Tom's gonna really like this one, I think. Oh, I forgot that there's walnuts in here. Oh my, yeah. This is really good. This definitely is a good fall cookie. This is delightful. <laughs> I'm having so much fun. All right, lastly, we've got the chocolate chip. This is definitely like your classic chocolate chip cookie. I really like the um, the size and the rise on it and it's it's perfect. I mean, it's a beautiful chocolate chip cookie. Perfect. I mean, it's perfect. Excellent. Excellent. I literally could not be more pleased with how these turned out. I'm definitely going to have to sit down and kind of reflect on this and write up recipes for all of these because I was just winging it, completely winging it. These turned out so nice. I was a little worried about the dough being wet. These are wonderful. They turned out really, really well. So 
excellent. We can proceed. I can feel comfortable giving you guys these recipes knowing that you're going to end up with something that's really, really good. So let's move on to the freezer portion of this so that I can teach you how to store these in the freezer so that you can have cookie dough on hand that you can just throw in the oven anytime. Okay, so this is definitely going to take me a little while. I went ahead and did the chocolate chip, so I probably won't go through all of this with you because I would really like to watch my YouTube video and do this, but I wanted to talk to you about it. I don't normally do it like this. Um, this is very time consuming. Here's my thought process. The way that I've done this in the past is I would have taken all of that dough, I would have used a smaller cookie sheet still with the parchment paper, I would have, um, probably when it was still warm, sprayed my spatula with nonstick cooking spray, I would have spread it out onto the parchment paper, I would have froze it in one big layer, and then when it was frozen, I would have used my pizza cutter to cut sections down, and then I would freeze that whole thing and I would come and break pieces off of it um, sort of like what you see in the store. However, um, I tried it this way because it never broke off cleanly and I would always take like half of another cookie or whatever. And so my cookies were always different sizes and it was just kind of a pain. So I'm doing it this way with the cookie scoop. They're super uniform. They're pretty much all the same size. I'm gonna put this cookie sheet in the freezer. Now, you're not baking these like this. You're just freezing them. So do you notice how close, they're pretty close together. You wouldn't bake them this close together. But the only thing you wanna ensure is that when you put them in the freezer, they're not touching so that they don't freeze together. Um, that's it. And then once they're frozen, you know, these two, once they're completely frozen, these two can touch each other and they're not going to stick to each other. And so you can just throw these all into a Ziploc bag and then when you're ready for them, you can pull six, ten, however many you want out of the Ziploc bag and keep the rest in there. That's my plan. I think that's going to work out really well. I'm going to go ahead and pop these down into the freezer and then I'm going to do the rest of them. <laughs> All right, the chocolate chip ones, by the time I finished scooping out the other three, the chocolate chip ones were really good and hard. Um, they're super, they're pretty frozen. Um, they're not going to like stick to each other. Um, I am going to go ahead and label a freezer gallon bag. I'm just going to say chocolate chip. I'm not going to date it because just the way I operate, I know, I know that we'll go through all of these before I make any more, so I'm not worried about trying to use old to replace new, you know, that kind of thing. Now, I, I like to freeze the dough. You can freeze the cookies. I have never done that before. Um, it just doesn't seem right to me, um, but I don't know if that's something you've done before or if that's something your mom did or your grandma did and that you're familiar with that. Go ahead, please, by all means, go right ahead. You would just take it out of the freezer. You can either let it thaw out on the counter. You could put it in the microwave. That's definitely an option. I baked these in the oven for seven minutes and they were still a little wet in the middle. So I think, let me think. If you, because you, you can bake these right from frozen. You can take this directly out of the freezer and put it right in the oven. I would probably do 12 minutes. Because they probably could have stood to been in there for nine. Add three minutes for being frozen. I think 12. Check them around like 11, 12 and see how they're doing. If you choose to um, freeze them as dough and bake them directly from frozen, I would probably do 12 minutes. And I just did 350, 350. So that's what I would recommend. Here we've got our chocolate chip. I'm gonna go ahead and work on getting the other ones bagged up. These ones are definitely not frozen yet, but I really want to take my braids out and put my comfy pants on. It is 9.45, so let's wrap this up. So I've got what I named pumpkin walnut, which <laughs> just sounds so good. I've got the peanut butter, I've got the chocolate chip. I definitely did not um, split the dough evenly because I've got a lot of chocolate chip, but that's totally fine. And then I've got um, the chocolate marshmallow. That's what I ended up naming all of these. My deep freezer consists of a bunch of Ziploc bags laid out flat. That's how I prefer to store things. So I'm just going to kind of spread these out a little bit. 
like so and lay them in here and I'll take them down into the deep freezer. But I'm really happy and look at the size of these. These are going to be really nice sized cookies. I've got a lot. This will definitely last me a while. Speaking of which, I just have these in freezers at Block Bags. I am not using my food saver um, because this is something that I want to be able to access frequently um, and open and close, open and close. So I'm not going to put these through my food saver, vacuum seal these. So I probably will try to use these in three months. They may last longer than that, but I don't want to have to worry about freezer burn. I don't want the quality to degrade. I think, honestly, I'd even like to use them before three months, but that's the number I'm going to give you. I think as long as you use them up before three months, you're going to still have really delicious, high quality cookies. That's my opinion. Um, you know, use your own discretion with that kind of thing, but I'm going to try to use them up in three months. And guys, I'm thrilled with this. Now, if you have anybody in your life, a coworker, um, your sister, a friend that has kids or likes to meal prep that you think could use these recipes or would like to learn about this, please share my video with them. Um, you know, I want to be able to share these tips with people, these recipes with people, so share it for that reason, but please also share it because you know, that's, that's really the best way to help me grow my channel is just sharing my content with other people in your life that you think might benefit. So please do that for me if you don't mind. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed but you want to see more content, more meal prepping, freezer storage, food preservation, if you like these recipes, please consider subscribing. I've got a lot of content like that already on my channel and a lot more coming in the future. But I really appreciate you hanging out with me this evening while we made some delicious cookies. And I'm thrilled to be having these in the freezer. I think Tom's really, really going to like them. So I think it was a success. So check the description for the recipes and I'll type those up for you so that you can have them. But guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me and I hope you guys have. It's Saturday, so I'm just going to go ahead and say I hope you have an awesome week. Thanks so much. Bye.